Hello there. Today we are going to learn a little bit more about uh, types in Rust, the, uh, the primitive types. Uh, there's something in Rust called uh, type inference, and that means Rust will guess the type. Um, so Rust uh, is pretty smart. Usually it'll be able to, uh, to guess the type and you won't need to tell it. And you'll remember last time. No, let my number equals 10. That will be an I32. And that's the uh, that's the default. Anytime it sees uh, something without a, uh, a period, it'll, it'll choose an I32. And uh, <clears throat> so last time we learned, you know, if you want to tell it that it must be like a U8 or a U16 or whatever, you do a colon. And then, uh, and then the type there, and that's one way to do it. But with uh, with numbers, you have another choice. You can put the type right after the number like that. So ten u eight, and that is exactly exactly the same. And there's another thing you can add here. You can add this uh, this space underneath, and that's to make it uh, more readable for you. And the interesting thing about these is you can. Uh, you can put in as many as you want. So that is exactly the same. You can put them over here, put them over here. So uh, let's see if you can guess what this will print out. And you can see it's 109. So the compiler looks at the one, ignores that, sees that, ignores that, sees that, ignores all that until it reaches U8. So this is exactly the same my number two equals so that's the exact same number this is just two different ways of doing it and you might wonder you know why why would i want to do that here is why uh, let's say we have a really big number there we go so the computer's fine with that, but for people, it's a little bit big. So you can put these uh, these underscores in, and then you can make it readable. And uh, there's something else interesting that just happened here. So you remember, it's an I32, but it says this number does not fit into the type I32. It can only be this big. So what we can do is make it an I64, and now it's big enough to print out, or big enough to fit inside you know, these eight bytes we have to print it. So that is how that works. Um, so that's enough for integers. Next we'll learn about floats, and floats are not called float in Rust. They're called F32 and F64. And you divide by eight, of course, to get the uh, the number of bytes. Um, F32s are a little bit smaller. Um, by default, um, by default, Rust will choose F64. So if you say my float equals 5.5, then this number here will be an F64. And actually, you don't even need uh, number after the uh, after the decimal or yeah that's right so if you just write uh, five dot then it'll uh, it'll see that it's a float and it'll make this into an f64 now here's another example from the book so you can see we have we have a float here and this time we're telling it this must be an F64. And then we have another one here and we're also telling it this must be an F60, F32. And then we're trying to make this third variable by adding them together. And this will not work, of course, because we are telling it to add two different types and Rust will not do that. This is, uh, this is the way Rust explains it, by the way. Trait, we'll learn about that later, but trait kind of means ability 
like it's not able to add f32 for x f64. So what you can do, if you take that out, then it will work. That was because this is an f32. Rust can uh, Rust is intelligent enough to uh, to look at this number and then see that you're trying to add them together and it knows that okay this uh, this needs to be an f32 to add them together so this time it will not choose f f64 it'll choose f32 so it can add it for you and yeah that's uh, that's enough about uh, floats for now